so this is something that is absolutely hilarious. Now, uh, Dave Rubin did a live stream on his show with Ben Shapiro as the host. And what you guys are going to be seeing right now is they are going to, uh, they're going to be answering a question from the audience about whether or not ch what Trump's chances are in 2020. So we'll talk about what they said about that. But also something that he sort of threw in there are two insanely stupid points that are so unbelievably dumb. It's almost like really difficult to actually be able to comprehend what he's actually saying. But check it out. All right. So here's a, here's another super chat question. Yeah. Play prognosticator. What are President Trump's chances of reelection in 2020? I would say basic, sh short of some sort of impeachment thing, and I have to catch up on a little bit of the news that you enlightened me on, I would say basically pretty good. If, if the left's decision to go down the road of identity politics and, and social Democrats, socialist Democrats, whatever the hell they're called now, but the, the Bernie Keith Ellison wing, which is, an, which is basically an extremist wing of a party, uh, then they're going to be in a lot of trouble. If the if is there any blue dog Democrat left? If that thing could come back, a sensible liberal, believe me, I could vote for someone who's probably a little more big government than I am. I, I wish, and I talked about it for years. I want my. I used to say my guys. I wanted my side, the left, the Democrats, to wake up. There's no sign whatsoever that they're going to wake up. Uh, potentially, look, if they get slammed in the midterms, then maybe they wake up. But you, you're predicting that they won't. I suspect it's not going to be that bad, actually, if, if you're a Republican, because I don't think there's anyone who voted for Trump that suddenly looks at the left and thinks that they're better. No. You I know, think, but, I, I, but their numbers may just be depressed. They right. may just not show up. And that's always what happens in midterms. And, and it's never good for the incumbent president's party and all that stuff. But I suspect generally what they're offering is so it really is fringe. And the only reason we don't think it's fringe is because the mainstream media jams it down our throat every day. And if we can get that message out to people, and I think you're particularly effective at doing it, but we need it to also get to people that won't listen to Ben mm -hmm. Shapiro, right? We need to get to people that'll listen to me or, or whoever else, people that listen to Joe Rogan or whatever, even though I know we all have a lot of crossover. Uh, if that message could get out there, this thing that's being sold to you as so obvious and good and the government can fix everything and blah, 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 if we can show them that is a fringe idea, here are some better ways to freedom than I think, um, forget Trump for a second, I just think that that's a much better path for a, a healthy system. So I'm out of the political prognostication business since I lost $10,000 <laughs> in the last election cycle. But it's a, it, By the I way, just, I was with you the night of the election, which I've told many people, well, I've, I've, yeah. I think we've talked about it publicly, but watching you that night, you know, it was, it was entertaining. It was like it was like being with like eight different people trying to burst out of one body. Oh my god, it was it was, really it, was, it was it was very wild. So yeah. you know, I'm I'm more skeptical that President Trump is heading a good path just because his approval ratings are so low, and there's only a referendum on him once every four years. So I think that you know, 2018 is shaping up pretty ugly for Republicans. The turnout numbers don't look good. Rep Democrats are are over representing pretty much everywhere in the early elections. Do I think it's going to be like a 60 seat blowout? No, but I think that there's a good shot Democrats win about 35 seats in the House. Again, I could be completely wrong here, right? It, so, is the scariest part of that, though, that let's – okay, so let's say the Democrats take back the House. And then blah, it's blah, just blah. endless investigations. Yeah. Nothing gets done for a couple of years. Uh, also, here's the thing. President Trump is riding on excellent news for the past couple of years. He's at like 42 percent in the polls usually, 43 percent in the mm -hmm. polls. He benefited, number one, from Gary Johnson and Jill Stein winning a combined, I think, 6, 7 percent of the vote in the last election cycle, but also – he has benefited now from a great economy and no major foreign policy crisis. We're overdue for some sort of economic downturn. And there's mm -hmm. one every eight to 10 years in the country. It's been since 2008. Uh, so I'm a little, you know, God, God willing, we avoid it. And it just continues to be strong because it'd be yeah. good for the country. Um, but if the and by the way, that the, the idea that the president is so in charge, he's of not, all he's of not that in charge is... of nearly any of the economy. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's the, I think the president can put a serious damper on the economy, but I don't think that the president can be held responsible for, for the performance of a particular economy. Again, when people say Obama was great for the economy, it's like, well, so was the Republican Congress great for the economy? Because they were there since 2010. All of that said, you know, I, I think Democrats are going to turn out in droves in, in 2020 in a way they didn't in 2016. The real story of 2016 to me was no one showed up to vote for Hillary Clinton. Like, we're all focused on Trump because he's the center of the universe. Yeah. But the reality is that was a referendum on Hillary, not a referendum on Trump. Trump's approval ratings were absolutely stable. They were always between 40 and 44 percent. Hillary's bounced around from 40 to 50 because people would say, oh, well, maybe she'll be good. And then they'd look at her and they'd go, oh, God, she's going to be awful. <laughs> right. And they just wouldn't show up. Right. She won fewer votes in the state of – Donald Trump won fewer votes in the state of Wisconsin than Mitt Romney did in 2012. 
Trump won the state of Wisconsin, Romney lost the state of Wisconsin because no one showed up to vote for Hillary Clinton. I think Democratic turnout in 2020 is going to be real high. Trump has to win somewhere between 12 and 14 million additional votes between 2016 and 2020 in order to win, because George W. had to win an additional 10 million votes to win, and he only lost by 500,000 in the popular vote. So how can that, how can Republicans win? Democrats can be awful, right? I mean, that's, that's what you're basically saying. Yeah. And so it's I always think, a head-to-head -head matchup. Yeah. If Democrats run Kamala Harris, Trump will win. If Democrats run Elizabeth Warren, I think Trump probably wins. Uh, if they run Kirsten Gillibrand, he will definitely win. If they run Joe Biden, I think it's an uphill run for, mm. for President Trump in the election. The thing how sad that is, that you'd need to bring in this, I don't know how old, what, he'll be 72 he'll be year old? Like, he'll be 78. Oh, God. He'll, he'll, be be he'll be 78, Trump will be 74, and the two of them will just club each other with their canes. It'll be, they'll, like, uh, you know how many yeah. tennis balls they'll go through <laughs> running on the, the bottom of those walkers? Yeah. Okay, so I really have to say that Dave Rubin saying that Bernie Sanders' Keith Ellison wing is the extremist wing of the party. Uh, the idea that in any way that, you know, a position of social democracy is some form of extremist uh, ideology is pure insanity. Um, I think that it's, it's a fear-mongering tactic. It's a tactic of multiple things, I'm going to say. One, one tactic he's using is sort of exaggeration to make, you know, obviously the enemy look worse. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to fear monger. But what I, you know, what I find hilarious about it is, is that Dave Rubin used to be a Bernie Sanders supporter. There's video footage of it. It's, there's literally video, video footage of him falsely um, describing Bernie Sanders as a socialist. So he actually supported a socialist. Um, he's actually, sorry, Bernie Sanders, not a socialist, but Dave Rubin described him as a socialist, meaning that in Dave Rubin's mind, he was a socialist when he really wasn't, but that would mean that Dave Rubin was supporting a socialist. But anyways, the point here being there's video of him, you know, going into depth about why he likes Bernie Sanders. Um, and so it's hilarious because he essentially used to be an extremist is what he's saying, but here's what doesn't make any sense. Like he says, like, you know, sane liberal blue dog democrat who's basic it's basically the idea of a corporate a corporate neo-lib is essentially what he's describing and what i don't think he understands is that that is what hillary clinton was so if you want a blue dog like you know i don't know what you want to call it just like a um a more moderate and he said moderate so let's say more moderate democrat as your nominee Hillary Clinton is the absolute spitting image of moderate because she didn't take a position on shit. When she did take a position, it was always in the form of pragmatism. Um, and she, you know, if you watch like her, if you listen to her speeches, always super, super, um, you know, you don't know what the fuck she's saying and she's super milk toast, and, you know, we need to... Uh, <laughs> I remember one of them, she was like, you know, we need to raise wages and help businesses. And she was purposely being sort of ambiguous as to what she was trying to advocate for because she was, she's a flip-flopper. She does, she says what she believes in, supposedly, um, she says what she, she supposedly believes in, uh, based on essentially what the agreement uh, or the accordance of the people is on said issue. So she purposely tries to stay in the middle of everything, and she stays on the side of whatever is popular at the time, because that's what suits her best to, for her chances to get elected. Now, obviously, uh, no one wanted to vote for her for that exact reason. The reason why people didn't want to vote for her was because she was a moderate, and she took positions on issues that ultimately lost her the election. So, so I think... I think it was like 77,000 votes across three states, which were Michigan, Wisconsin, um, and Pennsylvania, which were all Rust Belt states, all blue states that were lost by Hillary Clinton. If you think about it, the odds of a Republican actually winning are so low that the fact that Hillary Clinton lost is one of the most insane things ever. Because if you think about it, right, not only it's an, it's an insanely tall task for a Republican to win, and that's why it's insane that she lost this. Because if you think about it, basically, uh, you have both Ohio and Florida. You need both. Trump needed both of those, and he needed to penetrate the blue wall by taking three of the states that are blue states, blue wall states, that all went down. They're all Rust Belt states. So if you need to take Ohio and Florida 
And on top of that, you need three more states in the blue wall. It's going to be very difficult for a Republican to actually be able to win again. And the person, the only person who is really able to take that down was Donald Trump because a mixture of Trump was an extremely different type of candidate. You know, he got, I think he got more, well, I know he got more of the Mexican vote than Mitt Romney did, which is insanity, obviously. So he's just a really weird, weird political candidate that we haven't really seen in a long time, especially with the success that he's had. So if you want to run a moderate liberal Democrat, what you're essentially proposing is Hillary Clinton v. 2. And you know what's going to happen there, right? No one's going to show up to vote, just as you just described. No one's going to come to vote for a Cory Booker. No one's going to come to vote for Kamala Harris. No, I mean, name your neo-lib shill. Like, n- name all of them. I don't care. <laughs> They're, no one's going to come to vote for them because no one gives a fuck about them. No one. No one gives a shit. They suck. I, it's all. It really is that simple. They fucking suck. So no one's going to come vote for them. Um, and I just find this hilarious that the irony of saying, oh, you know, Hillary sucked as a candidate, and then, which she did, he's right. And then on the other hand, be like, oh, we need, you know, blue dog, you know, weak Democrat who's this weak little uh, milk toast. Oh, you know, let's think about this. You know, let's not move too far in either direction. Let's not actually take a side, really, in, in reality. No, that that's not going to work because you fucking idiot. That's the same exact thing that you did in 2016. And look how that went. So why why on planet Earth would you think it would work when what you're describing literally massively failed in the previous election cycle? And you're proposing that the Democrats do that shit again. Are you kidding me? That is one of the stupidest things that I have ever heard in my entire life. And saying that the Bernie wing is an extremist wing is a, it's a tactic of fear mongering. It's a tactic of just, it's just, it's a tactic of exaggeration. It's, it's pure insanity at this point. It is pure, uncut, unadulterated nonsense.